Okay, we have here today a really interesting integral. This one was sent to me by Sid. We've got the integral of x minus x squared minus one arc tan of x over x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one dx. Okay, I think my first step is pretty easy. It's just this denominator. We can definitely factor this. This is gonna be a perfect square. So what we actually have here, this is the same thing as x plus one all squared. So then let me just rewrite this using this thing as our denominator. And from here, I think I know exactly two methods on it. The first one is gonna be quicker. It's gonna be reverse quotient rule. You can kind of notice that having something squared in the denominator. For the quotient rule, if we have just something like f over g, the derivative of this, sorry, the derivative of this is gonna be f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. So we would know like our g squared is this x squared plus one. I did it this way on paper. The numerator is a little bit complicated, so it's not quite totally straightforward, but I think that's still the fast way. What I want to do instead is going to be the longer way, probably the much longer way, where what I want to do is try to create cancellation. We have an x squared minus 1 here. We have x squared plus 1 here. Well, what if I force that to be a plus 1? But I don't want to change it, of course, so I need to subtract off 2 here. So this is still a minus 1 in this region. My reason for doing it this way is with the x squared plus 1, we get cancellation. And another part of this is I know that the derivative of arctan is going to be 1 over x squared plus 1, so I think we can use that later. But first, I want to split this up into two integrals. So we have, we're going to have the same denominator in each. It's going to be x squared plus 1 squared. Now, for this one, we've got the x. We're going to leave this part to another integral. We're going to use this minus 2. So minus times minus 2 is going to be plus 2 arctan of x right here. And then for the second integral, we're just going to minus x squared plus 1 arctan of x over this x squared plus 1 squared. So this right integral is going to be really simple because we cancel one of these with one of these. And this is just going to be the u substitution I just mentioned. Substituting arctan, we have our du right here. It's going to be 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. But at the same time, I want to use a u substitution over here too, but I already used u. I mean, we could use it again, but let's do something else. So let's do, let's do t, and then we can do a substitution here for arctan, right? So t is going to be arctan of x. Same exact substitution. So we could do it all in one integral, but I think it's going to be easier to see if we do it separate. So then our derivative, same thing, is going to be 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now for this one, it's a little more complicated, right? So we're gonna to wanna to get, let's get a value for x, just reversing the inverse here. So this is gonna be x is gonna be tan of t. And so for this expression, x squared plus one, that's gonna be tan squared t plus one, which is just secant squared of t. So we'll go ahead and substitute all this stuff. x again is gonna be tan t, plus here this is gonna become two t, then with the x squared plus 1 squared, I basically want to separate this out so we can do it as, think about it like x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1. That way over here we have our dt, so we just have a dt on the end. And then this piece we said was secant squared, so we have secant squared t right here. And then for the second one, this is going to boil, this is just going to be a u. Because all the other stuff's du, so this one is just going to be simple power rule. And then here we can split this one into two integrals, just dividing in the secant squared t. When you divide secant squared t into tan t, that's just going to be sine t, cosine t. I'll bring it into the numerator and write it as cosine squared t. So what's going to happen is this is going to be 2 out front as a constant, t times cosine squared t. And then here in this last part, we'll just integrate it. This is going to be minus u squared over 2. But from here, we just have two easy integrals. Let me clean up the board and we'll finish this thing off. Okay, on the rewrite here, what I did is I changed the variable. I changed the t to a u. That was kind of dumb. I didn't really need to do that because the t value is exactly the same. It's just because I had it different on paper that I did it, but I didn't really need that. So let's just have everything in u. And then here on this first one, if I multiply in by 2 and multiply by 1 half, that way I'm just multiplying by 1. But what's going to happen is now this becomes just sine 2u using the double angle formula on that one. Then on this second one, we can use the power reduction here on cosine squared u. That's going to be the same thing as 1 half 1 plus cosine 2u. So when I rewrite it, the 2 and the 1 half is going to cancel. And then we can distribute in this u. So I'm going to do it as two separate integrals. We'll have just u times 1 is just u. Plus the other one's going to be 
u cosine 2u minus this thing here minus u squared over 2. But the integral of u is going to be just u squared over 2, so I can cancel this with this right here. Then on this first one, integral of sine 2u is going to be minus cosine 2u, but bring a 2 out in the denominator. On this one here, we can do a quick integration by parts with the di table over here to the right. We'll differentiate u and integrate cosine 2u. When we do that, let's differentiate this down to 0, differentiating twice. Here, this is going to be 1 half sine 2u. Integrate again, we're going to get minus 1 fourth cosine 2u. The last row is a 0, so we don't have to worry about that. We can bring the diagonals into our solution, so we're going to have plus 1 half u sine 2u. Then here, minus times minus is plus, so we get plus 1 fourth cosine 2u. But what we have right here is minus 1 fourth cosine 2u, so we can cancel down this with this. That's pretty nice because we're just left with this thing right here. And we're almost ready to back substitute, but what I don't really want is the double angle. So I can put it back. We have 1 half u sine 2u I can write as 2 sine u cosine u. Cancel 2's here. We have a value for u, but I don't know sine u and I don't know cosine u, but I can get to it pretty easily just by drawing a triangle. Let me make some space for a triangle. So for the triangle, let's just take this and put it back so we can say x is equal to tan of u. I'll write it as a ratio just because what we need to do is use that in the triangle. So, so for tan u, it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So we'll use x over 1. Pythagorean theorem, this is going to be x squared plus 1 right here. So what that tells us is for sine u, we go opposite of hypotenuse and get x over square root x squared plus 1. Cosine u, use the adjacent over hypotenuse, square root x squared plus 1. So putting it all together, back substituting for the u, we get just arctan of x. Multiplying all this stuff out, sine is going to be x over square root x squared plus 1. Then on our cosine, using this thing, 1 over same denominator. So what's going to happen is we can kind of multiply this stuff all together. The numerator is just going to be x, arctan of x. Square root x squared plus 1 squared is going to be x squared plus 1 add a plus c, and that's it. And so now with our solution, you can kind of see how the quotient rule is going to work because we have x squared plus 1 squared here. It's a little harder to see how the numerator is going to work because it needs to be manipulated and split up. I mean, I guess this was originally, this was a minus 1 right here. So basically, you just need to do some algebra on the numerator in order to get it to work. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.